Welcome to my budget deck channel where I try to make decks as cheap and playable as possible. So if this is something you'd be interested in then why not subscribe. Today I have had a look at the new variants of punk, uh, the new punk deck and obviously I'm trying to build it as cheap as possible which this time actually put me in a bit of a pickle because you see superiors all around and the problem with this is that you definitely need all of those because they're all essential parts to the combo and the combo is only really good if you have access to it basically as often as possible which comes with its own kind of issue so i shaved down wherever i could um and you see like literally it's just the core kind of thing but the core kind of thing sadly is 11 super rares i think i've only done that once if i'm not mistaken and uh, this time at least it's a bit more worth it than the last time so I think the last time was Speedroids, but let's jump right in. Uh, one card already that you do not have to play if you don't want to play it, but it does stuff for the deck. There's multiple usages uh, for this card, and um, I will be going over it once I hit the card that comes into play with it, and that is the Synchro Monster, so you can already kind of grasp what it is. But also uh, Emergency Teleport technically can summon this card out, so if you go in second and you already have all of your combo starters, then... This could be a way to annoy your opponent a bit because this card actually um, can use its effect uh, when it's on the field. Um, that is something that not a lot of uh, the hand traps can actually do because usually they're hand traps. But this one isn't so technically you can run it. But if you really want to be shaving down the ultra rares um, then you can get rid of this card as well. But in theory in a very competitive variant you want to get rid of all of those trap cards anyway and replace them with uh, hand traps. And this hand trap isn't too bad in the actual format right now, so it works, it does stuff. Um, I felt like it was a neat inclusion, but yes, if you want to shave down on the ultra rares, then this card would be the first one to go. Next up, one Ash Blossom, because you basically get it for free, like I already said, you will be drawn doing your own turn, but also doing your opponent's turn, and then being able to go into a hand trap is quite crucial. Sadly, they've only actually um, done one hand trap. I'm still waiting for the Nibiru um, kind of... Uh, bundle that you could buy but they haven't done it so far so this is the only bundle card that i have access to at one you obviously want to be playing this at three because this card is insane same for max c and this kind of stuff but it is what it is this is the only way i can uh, justify being played in a budget deck in a budget version so this is it we run a triple of the synchro fusion one but there's one reason for why this is because we don't have as much access uh, for our play starters as uh, other punk decks might have because other punk decks would be playing triple ogre dance but this is the card i did cut down you can obviously tweak the ratios a bit if you'd rather um be playing like two of them depends on what you do what you have um then you can cut down some of those play more of those and uh, and so on and so on but uh, usually at least uh, two emergency teleports are usually like a, a must because this doesn't require your normal summon so you can actually make more combos with this than once to take your normal summon but this card helps you go into your fusion monster and then with the fusion you can actually start some of your plays so if you have this card and one other in hand and um, that isn't a combo starter which is quite hard because this was one this is one this is one so if you start with this card uh, another one of those i think because i don't think it has to be different names and uh, two of uh, one of them or one of them then you can still go into the combo because otherwise your hand, hand would be dead and you'd be ending up with just searching one uh, trap card and uh, that's about it so three at this this can still do certain things at least if you haven't got to your play starter and that can be a big problem because your play starter is insane two of this one just to keep the count high if you want to cut certain cards and you could cut this down to one and uh, just play multiple ogre dances if you have that same for this this is technically like a one-off uh, you don't have to play that three at all but this card still does stuff if you normal summon it and it can still do some punk things if you for randomly drew into the field spell for example and so on then you can still do stuff with this card so um, it gets the name count off uh, up with the punks as well so if you get into the whole thing that you only start with the fusion guy then um, this can be a bit uh, of a balance to it but yeah usually you would shave them down but for the budget version and the more pure punkish kind of feel uh, i did leave them in uh, next up is a card that's very good for your play starters there's like whole combo videos and they're all the same like the budget version doesn't really function much differently from uh, anything else you want to be doing the exact same combos uh, getting your draw twos um getting stuff like diffusion uh, diamine um dear note sorry i think there's still uh, different names in the ocg um then uh, this is kind of your play so this is definitely uh three off unless you want to kind of make adjustment or you don't have three then you just 
play whatever you have and deal with the consequences is mainly what, what this is, uh, deck kind of is. One Deer Node, usually you kind of want to be playing too because this is like a summon from the deck. There is stuff that the card can do in hand if you draw it, so it's not terrible if you only run one. So the budget version, I'm fine with just running one. I have seen people only run one as well in decks that I've played against so far. and It's not terrible, it worked out for them, I guess. Um, but yes, you ultimately I think want to have at least two in your deck, but one is fine, it's not hampering too much of the playability. One Kaiju because you draw so many cards and uh, you can keep your opponent kind of in check but there will be the odd scenario where your opponent does stuff that you can't do anything about and then being able to use your massive draw engine uh, to actually get into one Kaiju it's felt like a good idea. This is one of the cards you can cut if you're not really happy with it but I've run into quite a few scenarios where there was just one thing that I couldn't quite clear because either I've already used uh, my Punk Amazing Dragon and since we only run one in this version uh, you can't really use it then doing your turn again and if they manage to build up something that's annoying Kaiju at least gets rid of it and then you can somewhat easily uh, get over this Kaiju. Obviously um, the Water Kaiju is better but this is the next best thing. Foxy Tune, uh, play start as well, very very great cards. Love this card, uh, very nice in Shadow, it's funny enough, but uh, I might be doing a Shadow variant at one point as well, but you can already see this is a pure version, it runs all the play starters and stuff, so there's not much you can actually splash in here that will not go over the whole budget kind of aspect of the deck, so I'd have to cut down on certain other stuff. Ogre Dance, kind of the same but different, it doesn't special summon, so it takes your normal summon, but a search of stuff, so it's yeah, I, I feel like it was less good than Foxy Tudin just because of the normal summon kind of aspect, but in the end, uh, play whatever you have is kind of what we're doing here. Um, the Extreme Session, very good card, gives you the draw two, gives you an extra, um, well not normal summon because it's a special summon from your hand, but it gives you an extra card on board which is quite nice, um, and also it is very, very searchable. You kind of want to be running this at two usually, but we have substituted this with uh, the other punk cards that is not as good, but Usually, even um, d depending on what version you play, but because usually nowadays you can OTK quite easily after you've uh, annoyed your opponent for one turn. But if the game gets more grindy, then this card isn't half bad because your opponent has to somewhat invest some resources into this card, or this card will drain your opponent's resources actually. And if your opponent gets rid of it, your monsters can't be destroyed by battle. And um, yeah, it's it's okay. It's not a bad card, and if you want to have more searches uh, for your spell searcher and if you want to have more cards in deck because technically if you have this card already in hand um, then you kind of need another spell card in deck to get the search of this card uh, if you want to another draw and stuff like that so sometimes having another one in deck is quite helpful and then this comes to mind it's definitely better than the other one the other one isn't terrible 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 but it's also not worth running in my opinion if you want to you can splash one of it in uh, in some situations the card can be good but i find like a lot of the time your opponent either targets your monsters if they don't have any cards you want to be popping so that's a bit annoying um yeah stuff happens but uh, you could be running it but i decided not to emergency teleport a card that yeah well in this deck very much does stuff because they're all level three psychic tuners so that's quite nice uh doesn't have to be a tuner but usually uh, that can come in handy as well especially if you have a good extra deck which this is not but if you have one that can be helpful too and uh, yeah, they also the combo I want to say with Ghost Ogre exists at least. Be bear in mind though, uh, the card is banished during the end phase, so maybe use it for a combo starter. If not, keep in mind that you might lose the cards again at one point. Forbidden Chalice, good going second, good going first, and it's budget. Forbidden Droplet, uh, same kind of reasoning as Ash Blossom, it's a very good card, it's good going first, it's good going second, so not all that much to complain about. Now we're getting into the weird stuff, uh, since this is mainly a go first version, and like I said, usually these slots are the ones that should be filled with hand traps. Uh, what comes to mind, Psyframe Gear Gamma, very very important, because it also stops your opponent from ashing um, your fusion monsters effect because at the time there's a monster on board so you can actually gamma it so that's quite nice but gamma would be another two super rares at least if you then want to go for one of the extra deck monsters as well then you have another uh, more expensive card and it's a bit problematic so I felt like I'll mention it if you have it play it if you don't have it it is what it is you could technically play Gdelta if you're wanting to go for a more go second ish kind of version but it's usually not overly worth it and then the classic ones obviously Effect Veil, Nibiru, uh, Ghost Spell, there's so much stuff uh, that you can be playing and uh, you probably should be playing technically even draw a Lockbird but 
Hmm, not sure if that's the meta for it right now or not. We shall have to see. But instead, I am playing a trap lineup because go first deck and time space chapel was one of the cards that I felt did some stuff because first of all it technically is, even works if your opponent uh, also plays punk and then they summon some stuff from the extra deck or they uh, summon stuff from your hand uh, from the hand the problem is the win effect so pff, a bit iffy um but yeah the thing is this card does stuff it does stuff against sprite in a manner at least against the extra deck things and uh, you only lose 1000 lp for it and you already lost lots of lp so uh, sometimes it's a bit it's a bit problematic, but I felt like it was the better ones of the trap holes for today's meta. But you can obviously play whatever you like. Lost Wind, very good card. If you discard off a Fox's unit, it can get itself back. It can reduce your opponent's attack value, uh, negate effects of Swift or Summon monsters. Very, very important. Infinite Impermanence doesn't really help much if you draw it during your opponent's turn because you will control stuff, but it's still a nice card to set. And since we basically get it for free, I would recommend running at least one if not two or three we run double of these because technically if you draw into them and have to make do with just one of your punk monsters on board be normal summoned or your combo has been disrupted then these cards are better disruptions than all of the other normal or rare trap cards so i would say like at least two and two of them i tried out three and two and then just try to search the card that you didn't draw into but you do then end up with drawing like multiples of the same and if you don't have foxytune to discard it and they're all hard ones per turns it can be a bit iffy you'll have to see to find the right ratios but i definitely in a pure version wanted to at least play two of each because the cards like this is a free pop and this is a negate plus like a life point gain so um yeah the cards are worth more than certain other ones so i don't find this too annoying. Magic Jammer, a card that I uh, find especially in the meta right now a bit uh, strong. It's good against sprite starters for example. It's um, technically you can protect yourself from the sprite uh, banish kind of card but it uh, doesn't really matter too much. Thing is uh, it also works against back row removal and you don't have anything else. You don't really have any negates so this is the only way of getting rid of lightning storms and such. Technically even um, the cosmic cyclones it's good against runic can help you against runic if you go in first so that's not bad so i felt like this card is worth running if the format shifts there's other cards you could run Div uh, divine wrath is nice the discard doesn't hit you too much because you will get draws during your opponent's turn with the fuel spill so the discard isn't actually that bad you could play stuff like rageki break as well if you want to and one card that i tried to play with that i toyed with a little bit is gravity collapse because the main aim of this deck is to go into what a synchro monster you don't really in a budget version one to tribute it though uh, because then you kind of lose uh, your ability to actually otk your opponent on the next turn which would be kind of essential but the card reads so strong i've realized and i've learned from flunderies that these kind of win effect uh, counter traps that shut down your opponent's uh, summons and whatnot aren't actually as good as they seem so i decided not to go with it but i did want to mention it also a card you could consider is Offerings to the Doomed, either if you go on second this card can be really nice and a lot of the time you don't really need your draw in your draw phase anymore if you've already been able to combo during your first turn. If your opponent uh, stops your combo in your first turn though, that's annoying and then this whole like skip the next draw phase will possibly come back to haunt you. You could try it out, I, I didn't try it out but I felt like mm, I wanted to mention it but I didn't have the time to really check if this card would make sense or not but it could. Uh, another cards you probably should be playing called by the Grief and Cross or Designator if you have them because yes it is what it is. Uh, hand traps are annoying. Hand traps um, make your place weaker and that's what they're supposed to do. That's why they exist and make sense but obviously um, you want to stop them from doing that to yourself and that would be a way to do that as usual. One uh, fusion monster mainly for budget reasons, but one is usually enough. You could decide going for two in the grind game that can come up, but if you also only play one like Deer Node, it doesn't really matter too much. Like one would be the good ratio to play here. We run some generic level eight synchros because it's, yeah, it, it's just to have them in here. You know, there's always a way of being able to do certain stuff. Usually like the level 11 ones would be nicer, stuff like uh, Star Eater or Psychic and Punisher. Um, there's obviously lots of generic uh, level 8s, there's plenty crazy combos that you can do, um, I'm not going into them right now because they are all uh, very expensive uh, as well and the only one that for this specific deck matters is your punk one and that one does a lot because you can actually add Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit to your hand. If you already have um, your Tramp Searcher in your hand and you don't need it anymore then you can actually instead of adding your Tramp Searcher 
and your combo can add Ghost Ogre to your hand, which is another interruption, obviously, and that is quite fun as well. And otherwise, this card can be constantly summoned back by the other one, then constantly search stuff. It is a very, very competent uh, deck at this. Now, just by adding three more cards to it, they're all, basically all, are very strong. Like, the new three cards, uh, the Fuel Spell, this one, and uh, your Node, they're all very, very strong in comparison to what we had to do with before. This one, very, very strong card. Uh, can, during your opponent's turn, be a disruption to up to, like, I think four it is, uh, four, like, bounces, basically. Usually, like, three is fine as well. Even two is fine, because we all pair it with, like, lots of back row and stuff, so that actually doesn't matter. And technically, can also be used to somewhat OTK, so this card is very strong. Some rank uh, three stuff, because you can go into it. Some rank eight stuff, because technically, you can kind of go into it. Um, because these cards are all level 8 and technically you have your extra deck stuff if you ever need to then that's a thing you could be running numeron dragon as well to play off of drag luby to have another card that can help you finish the deck uh, the game if you already have this engine transverser is uh, well one of my favorite uh, budget link twos obviously deco talker power co talker and liger just just for certain stuff sometimes you want to be clearing your board or doing some things um honorable mention melfi catty Funny enough, searches uh, Foxy Tune and uh, Doom Dog uh, Octhros can actually search Ogre Dance, which doesn't really matter that much because Ogre Dance then can't search a card because it usually can't normal summon unless you already drew into the fuel spell. But technically, you could link this off uh, in a budget way and then go into Ogre Dance. It's a, it's an option. It's not a good one. That's why I didn't include it, but I wanted to mention it. And also, if you already played Destiny board before, then technically this can also search Ogre Dance. Not recommending it, but that's a way to start your combos as well. You know, if you already have these cards, why not play them? Uh, technically, also, if you play the, the Gamma package, then you can uh, play Lambda as well. It can come up. It's not terrible. It's uh, it's a decent combo, I'd say. Hope you enjoyed the deck profile. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. But most importantly, I hope you have a good day.